What's up, y'all? Today we're going to talk about the internet's favorite DevOps rivalry, Terraform versus Pulumi. <laughs> no, just kidding. Pulumi and Terraform are both great infrastructure as code tools. What we're going to be talking about today is the exact opposite, how Terraform and Pulumi can work together side by side so that you can enjoy the benefits of both without having to pick one or the other. Okay, let me paint a picture for you. Imagine you're a web developer working on a dev team. At your company, there is a dedicated ops team. They love Terraform, and they also love boundaries. They've decided that the best way for your developers to deploy code is via containers. So your ops team has set up AWS's Elastic Container Service, backed by Fargate, to serverlessly run your containers. All your team has to do is package your code into a container and deploy it. ECS and Fargate will handle everything else. But the way they want you to use this is via Terraform configs. They maintain the ECS cluster and the ECR repo and provide outputs to reference those. And you write the Terraform for the Fargate service, the load balancers, and for shipping your container image to ECR. Unfortunately, that part is pretty complicated to write. Your team would much rather use Pulumi so that you don't have to learn Terraform HCL and can author this config using a language you already use every day like TypeScript. Turns out, it's your lucky day. Pulumi can do that. You can connect the two systems using a remote state reference to import Terraform outputs directly into your Pulumi program. Let's give it a try. Okay, the first thing we need is a little containerized app to deploy. For the purposes of this demo, this will be a simple Docker container, which runs Nginx and serves up a static HTML page. Let's have a look at that. Here's the HTML file. That looks good. And here's the Docker config. It uses the Nginx base image and copies our index.html file into the container's user share Nginx HTML directory so that it can be served up by Nginx. Now that we've got an app in a container, the next thing we need is an ECS cluster and ECR repo to ship it to. In our imaginary scenario, this would be authored and managed by the ops team, but for the purposes of this demo, we will just use a simple demo config in Terraform, which will create some outputs we can reference later. This config sets up an ECS cluster to manage our workloads and an ECR repo to manage our container images, and then outputs the ECS cluster's ARN and the URL of our ECR repository. Okay, let's run this with Terraform. Okay, it looks like that worked. Let's double check with the AWS CLI tool to verify the ECS cluster and ECR repo are ready to go. We can see a list of ECS clusters by running AWS ECS list clusters. There's our cluster. We can get more detail by running describe clusters and even more by specifying the cluster we are interested in. Similarly, we can see our ECR repo with AWS ECR describe repositories. Okay, that all looks good. We've got the cluster and repository we need. We can access those by the ARN and URL that were output by Terraform. The next step is the Plumi program that references those Terraform outputs. We're going to use TypeScript for this today, but of course you can use any of Plumi's supported languages like Python, C Sharp, Go, etc. Let's look at the Plumi program. This program uses remote state reference from our Terraform plugin to grab those Terraform outputs we just created. Next, we define the image that we want to build. This will create the Docker image and upload it to our container repo. Here we pass the repo URL that we received from Terraform's output. We also need to define a load balancer to route traffic to our container. And finally, the Fargate service configuration, which ties it all together. We reference the ECS cluster by its ARN, the image by its URI in the repo, and map port 80 to our load balancer. There's also an output value of the URL that we can use to reach our container running in Fargate. That's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and try running that. Cool, Pulumi really did a lot of work for us. It figured out all of the security groups, roles, and policies because we're using the Pulumi Crosswalk Library, which provides a higher level API for common tasks like creating load balancers and shipping container images. Let's click on the URL and see if that's running. Now that we have this set up properly, let's make a quick change to our app and see what the workflow is gonna look like to publish updates in the future.
Sweet! With our powers combined, using Terraform, Pulumi, and a little Docker, we have a super convenient workflow with a good separation of concerns. We can see how Pulumi was able to consume the outputs from Terraform, connecting new resources made and managed by Pulumi to the ones already under management by Terraform. Man, I love Pulumi! So to review, we use the remote state reference from the Pulumi Terraform plugin to import references to resources under management by Terraform. This was only a single line of TypeScript to connect the two systems, and only a few more to define new resources with Pulumi. We could have just as easily done that in Python, Go, C Sharp, or any of the other many languages that Pulumi supports. Thanks for watching. Check out the links in the description for more resources, including all the code I showed in this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll be back with more videos to show you the many ways you can upgrade your infrastructure management with Pulumi. See you next time!